I'm so stoked they put Avengers weapons in Fortnite. I gotta get Hawkeye's bow. Found my treasure. Could it be the bow? Uh, oh, it's it's Iron Man gauntlets. Those are okay, I guess. You know, I can use them to go find the bow. I found another treasure chest. Could it be? Could it be? It is. It's Hawkeye's bow. All right. Coming at you, Thanos. Holy crap. It's got a grappling hook. Ah, damn it. I'm in the storm. Run, run, run. Okay, got the bow figured out. Now let's go find Thanos and put an arrow in his purple head. Everything is led up to this moment. Jeez, uh, where's Thanos? I got an arrow with his name on it. Uh, oh, 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 you gotta be kidding me. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Hey there, fellow maker. Welcome to the shop you've got built today. And I wanted to make something from Avengers Endgame because it just came out. I just saw it. It was incredible. Uh, but then Fortnite went and dropped a bunch of Avengers stuff in their game. So I figured, why not enjoy the best of both worlds and make something from that. So we're going with Hawkeye's bow. And I've already drew, drawn up my templates. Ready to go here. We're going to do this mostly out of EVA foam and some plastic. And I'm ready to jump right in. Here are my templates, and I, I drew all these myself. They're free to download if you'd like to give it a shot yourself. So these are all set. Some of these pieces I'm gonna actually cut out on my laser, so I haven't trimmed them yet. All of my references I grabbed from in the game. Actually, my buddy Jacob was a superstar and collected all these wonderful references for me, so I used that to make my template. And this is kind of how it's all gonna go together, but I'm starting with the main part of the bow right here. And I've got some three quarter inch thick uh, EVA foam. I believe this is from TNT Cosplay Supply. I'm gonna cut out two of these and sandwich them together with a bit of this aluminum armature wire uh, sandwich between them to give this part a little bit more strength. So I need to start tracing out two of these. I went with Hawkeye's bow for a couple of reasons. One. It's not readily available. You can buy Cap's shield, but you can't buy Hawkeye's bow. Uh, but also, I haven't made a bow in a long time. I did uh, Lara Croft's bow a while back, and that was really cool. Um, but there are a bunch of other options, obviously. You got Cap shield, Iron Man's gauntlets. Of course, there's Stormbreaker, which is super epic. I'm sure you've got a favorite Avengers weapon out there. Actually, actually, this is perfect. Let me know what your favorite Avengers weapon is down below. I was excited to make this bow, but maybe you have something you would want to make. Yeah, let me know in the comments what your favorite Avengers weapon is. Got my two halves rough cut out. Now I'm going to go in and trace those lines more closely over on the bandsaw. I got the outside shapes cut out here on the bandsaw. You could of course do this with a knife, but the bandsaw makes sure all those cuts are nice and perpendicular and it's really quick. Now I need to cut out these hand grip parts here and I'm gonna start by punching a hole with this sharpened brass tube and then I'll use my scroll saw to cut out the rest of it. That way I can make this entire cut without having to cut through the outer portion of it. Got my two pieces ready to go. Before sandwiching them together, I want to embed this aluminum armature wire. It's a very flexible wire that I can form by hand, but when I glue it in here, it'll give this a lot more rigidity, especially anywhere where it's nice and thin or where the handle is. So I kind of roughed out where I want it to go on here, and I'm just going to poke holes through my template all along this line so I know where that wire needs to go. These holes are being poked on the face that will become the inside, so we won't see any of these punch marks. They're gonna get obscured. That's good for one side, and then I wanna make sure I'm flipping this over and putting the holes for this one also on the inside, like a sandwich. I don't want it to be on the outside, if that makes sense. 
So this is our line. This is where we're gonna carve a trench for our wire. I have a little sanding drum set up here in my rotary tool to carve my trench. And this can be sloppy, we're never gonna see it. It just needs to be a large enough trench to hold our quarter inch uh, aluminum armature wire. Now that I have my trench cut on both sides, I need to form my aluminum wire here to fit in that trench as closely as I can. And it's soft enough to bend it by hand, but I also have a pair of pliers here to help out for some of the tighter bends. Well, I cut that to the perfect length. That doesn't usually happen. <laughs> usually not even close. Got my wire all hooked up here and ready to go. Um, I'm gonna barge all this closed, but for now to keep this in place, I'm just gonna tack it down with some good old fashioned hot glue right in its little trench there. Cause we're gonna slam these two halves together and I don't want this thing moving at all. So in you go. Got my contact cement here. Uh, I also have my respirator cause I'm gonna do a lot of this and I don't wanna breathe this stuff in. Pretty nasty. Uh, I'm gonna put two layers of glue on both sides. So I'll brush a layer on both of these, let it dry for five minutes, brush another layer on, let that dry for five minutes, and then I can press the two halves together. That extra layer of glue is gonna help this be a lot more durable. I'm making sure I'm brushing all the way to this, to the outside edge, so that we don't end up with a seam showing there. Now is the critical time. I'm gonna lay these two pieces together, but I'm going to block a lot of it so that I can take my time and these parts won't touch yet. So I'm just trying to make sure all of the outside edges line up as close as possible. I'm gonna come in and clean those up. So I'm making sure all these uh, finger bits line up, making sure this whole part here lines up really well, and then working my way down. Just trying to find that groove. Just going around the edge especially and squishing it really hard together to make sure it's nice and bonded. You can see though, wait, how does he hold it? Like that. Ha! That looks like a pretty good size. Gonna be big winglings coming off of there. Um, it's a little awkward in my hand, but once I round this over a little bit, we should be in good shape. Ooh, there's a gap there. See, I still have a gap right there. That's what I'm making sure I don't have by pressing all of the edges together really, really hard all the way around. To get these edges all cleaned up, I'm gonna use my spindle sander. Obviously a bit of an extravagance, but you can get these drum sanding bits here, these big fellas at Harbor Freight for super cheap and you could put this in a drill or in your drill press even better to make your own spindle sander. The base form of our uh, the bow body is pretty much done. Uh, I'll have to round everything off in a little bit, but before I do that, I wanna add this notch. This is where the arrow will go. The arrow's gonna go in this way. The bottom of it, the sort of ledge it rests on is right there. And then I can trim my pattern a little bit, like that. And now I just cut a little wedge out of there and that's where our arrow goes. I've kinda drawn the, the notch that I wanna take out, so I'm gonna cut straight down and then t rotate a little bit and then cut my way out. I'll probably leave a little extra material so that I can come in with my rotary tool and finish it off nice and clean like. There we go. It's actually pretty clean, not too bad. Didn't hit our uh, armature wire, so that's good. I'll come in with the Dremel and just clean that all up. While I have my rotary tool out, I'm gonna go and round over all of these edges. Most of them just have a, a gentle round over. Um, some spots like the grip here, I'm gonna do a little more sculpting on. But I figure now's a good time to get that squared away before I start attaching things to the, the main body here. This is a template for a part that's gonna be attached later. This area here is gonna get glued. So I'm not rounding these areas over, just so I have a little bit more surface area for that glue up. All the edges are nice and smooth. Now we gotta do a little sculpting 
again with the rotary tool, I just cut this part of the template out so I can trace. This is going to be like a, like a bevel uh, on both sides. I'm also going to do something similar in the grip region over here. Again, I'm going to use my rotary tool. I had a 220 grit bit in there, but I've got uh, 100 grit. It's a little more aggressive, should remove material with more efficiency. Mark this guy over here and I can start making dust. Got all the contours sculpted into the handle and these bevels right here. There's a couple more details I want to add. So this part here, there's some lines around the grip. Uh, so I'm going to cut those out of my template and use them to trace their location on the bow. Like that. And then this part can go back on the bow and I can trace the locations there. I'm just going to use a ballpoint pen. It's a little hard to see on this darker foam, but it provides a very definitive line where I'm going to cut right there. And there's a circle there. We'll tackle that later. For the grip over here, just line that up a bit. And then on the grip portion here, that goes there, there are a couple of lines in there. And I will kind of mark where those are going to go. I'll kind of figure out, because they have to go between each, each finger part, and then they have to connect on the other side. So I'll figure those out in a bit. But this is a good place to get started. Uh, now I can flip it over and trace the other side. This is on both sides and I want to connect them, so I'm just freehanding this. Same thing on the grip over here. It needs to connect somehow and, I, and I'm, I'm just guessing, but I'll make it look good. I think it needs to go kind of like that. These lines go down between the finger parts. I try not to obsess over things like this because, let's be honest, your hand's going to be covering this. You've got some wiggle room. Now that I have my lines all laid out, I have a very sharp knife in my uh, knife holder here and I'm just going to score a cut just under the surface. This is creating a very shallow line that we will then open up later with some heat. This is only a couple millimeters under the surface. Got my heat gun here ready to go. I'm just going to heat the surface until those lines open right up. Now I have this very clear distinct detail on there. There's a little more to add in a little bit, but I'm going to do the same thing to my grip. Next detail is this, I don't know, it's a rivet or something. Um, it's going to go right there to figure out where it's going to go. I'm just going to use my awl to poke a small hole there. So that'll be the center of it on both sides. And then I'll use my rotary tool to make that detail. Let me show you how. I'm going to use the end of this to make my circle just like that. If you need a deeper circle, you can loosen this and slide the drum off of the end of it a little bit to make an even deeper circle. This area has a circle in it as well, and I'm just going to, I guess, eyeball it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Nice. There's another one of these uh, circle details on the bottom here, so I'm just going to add that. There's also one on the top of the bow on the front, so right here, and I'll do one on the on the bottom of the bow too. The main body of the bow is just about done as far as the fabrication is concerned, but now we need to turn our attention to the weird wing things on the top and bottom of the bow, and here's my template for that. There are some options. Uh, I'm not going to make these out of foam. I'm going to make them out of plastic so they're more rigid. Uh, I think that foam has many strengths, but thin pieces over long distances are just going to be real floppy. So I'm going with styrene plastic here. It's about an eighth of an inch thick. This stuff is very durable and rigid. Uh, I will have to cut this with a bandsaw. Uh, another option would be uh, this is a PVC foam, also known as Sintra. This is a lot more flexible at the same thickness, but you can cut it with a knife. Uh, all this stuff you would probably find 
find at uh, either a hardware store or more likely like a sign shop uh, to get plastics like this or look for a plastic distributor near you. So I'm gonna trace this out on my plastic and go get it cut out. I'm gonna need four of these. So uh, if I wanted to cut these all out at once, I could stack four of these up and stick them together with double-sided tape and cut them all out at the same time. I did this part and I did this part and I did three more of each. So I should be all set with all the pieces and now I need to figure out how to attach them to my bow so that it will be nice and sturdy. I don't want this thing being too flexible. Um, so I think what's gonna happen is these two parts will go here and then this gap between them, I'm gonna fill that with uh, EVA foam. So this is where this piece is gonna go and I'm just drawing on the back of it where it meets up with this foam because I wanna fill the rest of that with foam, kinda like that. And I also wanna double check that this will work on both sides. So that should fit perfectly on the top of the bow, just like that. And then if I had the same thing over here, that's gonna be a little different. So I'm gonna have to make two patterns, but that's okay. So I'll, I'll do this one first. So that's gonna be the, what the piece of foam looks like inside of there, sandwiched under that. Uh, and then the foam I'm gonna use, I actually have, this foam here is about an inch thick, which is pretty much perfect. Um, I just need to cut a strip that is the same width as this foam, um, about an inch and a half. I'm gonna set the fence on my little bandsaw here to an inch and a half and just run it through. Perfect. Like that, and I will also cut this on the bandsaw. This part here fits right back there, and then these will get sandwiched around it and then like that, and this will be quite sturdy, I hope. So that one's done, I just have to do the same thing on the other side. To figure out where the other side's gonna go, uh, I'm gonna just tape this back together, and I do believe it protrudes a little bit from the front on this part. Same thing though, I can line it up where I think it ought to go, and then trace on the back of it like that. So I'll just trim that right there. I don't need this circle bit here. And then this can be used on the rest of my foam here to cut out the other part. I think it's time to attach these to the main body of the bow. I've checked and double checked that these are in the right position. I'm just gonna make a quick registration mark on each one to ensure that I put it back in the right spot after I've done my gluing. And then uh, I'm just gonna attach these with barge. Now, I could probably have cut these pieces out of the main body earlier on if I had thought to do that, but I would have used a lot more of this foam and I'm, I'm not sure this whole piece would have fit on the piece of foam I had. So I'm just gonna glue these on and I bet it'll work great. I gave the barge about five minutes to dry and it looks like we are ready to go. Now I just wanna be really careful about sticking this together nice and flush so that this piece will cover like that and everything looks pretty. And then I think I'm gonna use more barge here and here to stick this down. Seems like the best option right now. So the barge needs to go just along this part. The contact cement has dried. I'm not sure this is the best adhesive for styrene, but I did use a lot of it, so I've got that going for me. This should be plenty strong. Yeah, that is really, really rigid now. Fantastic. Ha! Pretend it just sprung open like that, like Hawkeye does his cool man move. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Onward! The next step will be to do the further out part. Th this also needs foam squished between it. So if these were the two layers, there's gonna be foam between it, but there needs to be a gap here for the pulley, this big pulley right there. So I need to keep all that in mind. Uh, and I also need to figure out what angle this should be. This round part is meant to mirror that or match that. 
and the end of this bevel should touch down right about there. So just like before, I can flip this over and trace the back of it, just like that. So I'll trim this piece out to make our pattern, and then the other side is gonna end at this dotted line. So I'll cut both of those, and that'll give us our pattern. So this will fit perfect. Um, this will get cut out of a thick piece of foam like before, only this one needs to be a little bit wider. This was an inch and a half. These are an eighth of an inch, so that's another quarter. So one and three quarters of an inch. I'm pretty sure that the top and bottom for these will be identical, so I'm gonna cut out two of these on the bandsaw. Here's a little piece I just cut out, did a little cleanup work on the uh, sanding tools there. This should fit nicely, just like that. Lots of surface area for glue too, which is nice. So that'll fit there and then this will go right over it. Oh, that is satisfying. And then to connect the end of it, I'm gonna make a similar piece, but just from this dotted line out so that the ends of this are connected. Is this just long enough? It is just barely long enough. I planned it perfectly. Of course, if you don't have really thick foam like this, you could go and glue several pieces together, make a big old block of foam. Got my spacer pieces all cut out, ready to go, and they're gonna go together kind of like this. And then that will go all up on like that. Gonna glue it down right here, so I'm roughing that up a little bit. I'm gonna mark out where this is going so that I have a target when I'm gluing up, so this will get glued and then I'm using super glue just because it's really quick and I think it's gonna bond better with the uh, styrene plastic. I'm gonna have a little time to position it and then I have my super glue accelerant, which I can dribble in there to kick it off and cure it all really fast. That feels nice and secure. I can do the same thing for this part on the tip. And then I should be able to glue this, and I can glue this in, in two parts. So I'll glue this part first. And now I got plenty of flexibility to work with and line that up. There we go, nice and glued up. And that's our part. Uh, I have to put the other one together and then we can see about attachment. Time for the glue up and I have an idea. So this foam part and that foam part are gonna meet up, so I've got my barge for that. But I've got these pieces of styrene that are touching and I want that bond to be really strong. And I've got some styrene glue. It's actually a solvent that melts the plastic. So these two pieces will essentially be welded together. So I'm thinking, put barge on here, stick that down, and then once it's stuck, I can use this thing to brush the glue in there, or maybe I'll brush a little bit before I stick it down, that's probably a better idea. I don't know, let's give it a shot, see what happens. I'll let this dry for the five minutes the barge needs, and then I'll uh, put the styrene welding glue on, and then I'll stick everything together. It is time to stick these together. I'm gonna take some of this styrene glue, brush it in there, brush it in there. Might as well brush some on here. And then I can glue this together. And the barge for the foam should grab on, which makes it plenty sturdy already, but the, this welding will make it really strong. And I have the tiniest little clamps to clamp those together. I might need a little bit burlier of a clamp. Let's give this a try. That's better. I can even go in and brush a little bit around the edge too. I don't know if that's gonna help or not. I really don't have a lot of experience using this type of adhesive. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna let that dry, go to the other side. I'm gonna leave those parts to dry for a while and work on some of the smaller things like the arrow and uh, this uh, winch of some kind and a sight and this, this doodad that holds the strings for some reason. Uh, so let's start with the sight. There is a, a circle and it is about the diameter of this piece of PVC pipe, 
which is about two and a half inches in outer diameter. So I'm gonna cut a slice of this to start with and then figure out how I'm gonna attach it to the bow. The ring for my sight is about a half an inch uh, wide, so I set my fence to half an inch and now I'll cut it out. I've cut out some more pieces of this three quarter inch thick foam. Those will be these two little parts. And then I have this uh, PVC pipe that can go in them. I have to drill some holes and then that'll go on there. Uh, I am working from pretty limited references there. So I'm kind of kind of making this up as I go. For the PVC pipe, I'm gonna drill a hole. And for that, I have a Forsner bit. I'm gonna drill almost all the way through. Hopefully I can remove that, there we go. And that'll get glued in like that. And then same thing with that guy. Um, these parts I'm gonna have to round over a little bit with the Dremel tool, I'll do that in a little bit. And then this, I need to flatten one side so that it can be glued on nice and flush right there. So I'll just flatten this over on the belt sander. And that's gonna go right there. Perfect. Uh, before I glue that down though, I'm gonna go shape these a little bit with the rotary tool. Got all my pieces set up here, looking pretty good. Um, my two foam bits, which I rounded off and they're gonna go kind of opposite one another like that around my PVC pipe. Uh, I have my wider PVC pipe for the sight ring, which I have sanded. And then there's a tiny little sight. I just cut that out of a little piece of styrene over on the bandsaw and that'll get glued in place. While I'm putting this together, I would like to thank our sponsor, Skillshare. They're an online learning community with thousands, thousands of classes. Uh, categories like design and photography, crafts and more. And you can kick off your learning adventure by using the code SKL.SH forward slash, whoop, let's put that on the right way, forward slash punish props three. That premium membership gives you unlimited access to classes made by experts in their field. That way you can learn new skills, unlock new opportunities and do the work that you love. Get this together all nice like. I watched a bunch of their classes and I love them, especially Mike Boyd's class on how to learn. Mike runs his own YouTube channel where he challenges himself to learn new skills every week. And he's put together his own Skillshare course on how he learns so fast, which is something I am extremely interested in. Skillshare is also more affordable than other learning platforms out there. Boop, boop, boop. An annual subscription will run you less than 10 bucks a month. And even better, they're giving you the opportunity to try it out for free. You heard me right. The first 500 people to use the link down below will get a two month free trial. Again, that link is skl.sh forward slash punished props three. Nice and glued in there. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and providing a valuable resource to creative types like me. And now our site is all done but I'm not gonna attach it yet. I'm gonna paint everything before it all gets glued together. The next piece to make is this winch for Hawkeye's grapple arrow. Uh, mostly, I'm gonna cut out a bunch of circles, starting with one out of this three quarter inch thick EVA foam. This thicker portion of the winch is actually gonna be a smaller diameter than the full size of this, so I set up my compass here to be a little bit smaller, and that's what I'm gonna use to figure out what to cut out. And then the full diameter, I'm gonna cut out of this uh, four millimeter foam. That'll go outside of it so there's a lip around uh, where the string is gonna wind up. So I need to cut out that circle and that circle and also this smaller inner circle. One circle. So that when I cut this out, it goes there. Hook. This four millimeter stuff is thin enough that I should be able to cut it with just a sharp knife. One circle. 
Probably need one of these for the back of it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut out two of these, so I'll just cut out another one. There we go, that will end up there. Go in the middle there. Just a little bit of a reference. Here is my grappling hook winch cookie. Everything layers together like that, and then the string will get wrapped around there, and you can see that gives us this lip here. Uh, before I glue everything together though, I do want to soften all of these edges with the rotary tool. And now, I glue everything together, and for these large flat areas, I'm just going to use my contact cement. Barge is just about tacked up here, so I can set everything together and make my delicious foam sandwiched cookie. Squish it down. And then uh, this guy right here, I didn't get contact cement on both sides, so I'm just gonna super glue this one down, this little part. I generally use contact cement for large areas and for smaller detail parts, or if I'm in a hurry, I use my super glue because it's a little more accurate, but also uh, it does dry really, really fast. There we go. There are five circles on here, and I'm gonna use the same rotary tool trick that I used before, but I'm gonna use a smaller bit to make smaller circles. This is the larger rotary bit I had in there, and I'm gonna use this one, but I wanna move this uh, drum off the end of it a little bit, so I do have to loosen it until it will slide, and then I can slide it off the end a little bit, like that, and then tighten it back up again, and use this to make my circles. Circle. And that is the winch. This arrangement of rectangles is this weird uh, bit that holds the strings for some reason. I don't know how compound bows work. I made these parts the same way I made the parts for my sight, uh, with one difference. I noticed upon closer inspection that the uh, tube actually sticks out of one end, so that's gonna be more like that. Just like the sight, I'm gonna paint this first before I glue it onto the bow. The next thing to make is an arrow. I'm gonna start by making this large part of the arrow, and I wanna try something. Uh, I've got a chunk of foam. This is one and a half inch thick uh, EVA foam that I cut into a square piece, and I wanna drill a hole through it and chuck it up in my drill to make a mini lathe. I'll make a spindle out of this quarter 20 bolt, but I have to drill a hole through this, and my sharpened tube can be used to do that. I'm trying to go through the middle of it. Actually, I can go from both sides and meet in the middle. I think they met. Ready? <laughs> now, I can put through that through there. Put that on there, put that on there, tighten it up so it's nice and secure on this. This can go in here, and I can spin that and turn it into something that looks like that, I hope. Well, that kind of worked. Sure did make a lot of dust, and I got it pretty close to where I need it to be. Uh, I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna cut it to length. Cool. Here's my arrow, and I'm gonna cut mine out of this six millimeter foam. Now, this would be considered convention friendly. So if I brought this to a con, they probably wouldn't have any problem with me walking around with an arrow that's got a foam arrowhead. But if you wanted something a little bit more uh, realistic and less floppy, you could cut this out of plastic instead. So you've got options. You could even make this arrowhead removable so that you could swap it out for a different one if you want. Or you can make a bunch of different arrows. It's up to you. There we go, there's an arrowhead for us. I'm gonna use the sanding drum on my rotary tool to soften the edges and put a nice sharp bevel on this. If your uh, tool is catching on the edge of a part like that, like that, then you wanna turn it around and start from the other side. And then when I get to that part, I'll do that over here. 
There's my flimsy little arrowhead. It'll do just fine. It's going to go right in there. I'll glue that in a little bit. Uh, the shaft of the arrow is just going to be this dowel, quarter inch dowel here. I do need to cut that to length, but there's our arrow. And then the fletching for our arrow is going to be this. I think I need three of them and I'm going to cut it out of some of this four millimeter foam. Here's my quarter inch dowel. It's just wood and it should be 26 inches long. Unfortunately, my cutting mat has a ruler on it. I'm just going to go cut that off right now. Actually, this won't fit in my bandsaw. I might have to cut it by hand. That was actually probably faster than using the bandsaw. <laughs> kind of figured out where these are going to go. So I'm ready to glue them down. And I think super glue is going to be the right tool for the job here. So let's give it a shot. And then I can do the next one. I glued myself to it. It's okay. I need a notch for the string to rest. Uh, so I'm just going to carve that very carefully with this cutoff wheel. There we go. Kind of a V shape. I've got a file here, a triangular file. I can use to clean that up. Now I can glue the arrowhead on. Locked in place. A little bit of glue around here and the arrowhead goes in. And there we go. That is all the fabrication on our arrow. Why don't we see how the bow is doing? Our bow is looking great. It seems like our cement on that styrene has uh, dried all the way. It feels really sturdy. Ah, and it's looking like it's about the right size, I think. I need to add some circle details on these parts here, and I'm going to make those out of two millimeter foam. And I'm going to cut those circles using this sharpened pipe. This is just an aluminum pipe from the hardware store that I've sharpened on my sanding tool. And I can come in and boop. Cut little circles, hopefully better than that. I think I need to sharpen this. There we go. Nice. Got my little dots cut out and I'm just going to super glue them down in place. And I'm just going to eyeball it. You know what Jimmy DeResta says? If it looks straight. Ah! If you glue your finger to your prop, never mind. <laughs> Try again. You know what Jimmy DeResta says? If it looks straight, it is straight. And that looks like it's in the middle, so I'm okay with that. All of these plastic bits, by the way, have already been sanded. I just used a 220 grit. Sanded everything so that everything will glue down nicely. Also, we're going to uh, seal this whole thing with Plasti Dip. And I want to make sure that Plasti Dip has something to grab onto and doesn't just peel right off once it dries. I think there's just one more piece to make, and it's these pulleys. Well, two. One pulley on the top, one on the bottom. They are slightly different. This one has a peg on it. Of course, I could cut all these out by hand, uh, but I did buy a laser cutter a few years ago and it doesn't get a lot of use. So why don't we cut those out with the laser because it's cool. It's also fast and accurate. Here are my pulleys. I cut them out of 10 millimeter foam. Uh, you can see it didn't quite get all the way through. I had to cut this in several passes to get all the way through this foam. Technically, my laser cutter can only do quarter inch material and this is quite a bit thicker than that. So uh, it was a little bit of a struggle to get through. Uh, but overall, sure is handy to be able to cut this out so accurately and quickly. Uh, otherwise, I'd just go in with my X-Acto and my template and just cut everything out by hand. Of course, laser cutting this uh, puts out some nasty vaporized foam. My uh, laser cutter has a, an exhaust fan and it vents all of that, those fumes outside. Very important. Uh, the pieces look fantastic. And I not only did I cut out the pulleys, but I cut out these rings similar to this winch thing. Uh, this will make a lip around the edge of our pulley where the string is going to go. And I'm going to super glue this in in uh, segments, just a little bit at a time, because I want the inner part of this ring to match up with the inner part of the pulley design. 
like that all the way around. Got my pulleys just about done. Need to add a couple of more additions. Uh, these are pieces of foam dowels and I just cut some slices off to make this little knob. I imagine that's where the, the string attaches. Whatever that is, that's what I'm making. I'm just gonna glue this smaller dowel to the larger one in the middle, close to the middle anyway. Very nice. It looks like that's in the right spot. Then to get these to fit nice and snug, I wanna add kind of an axle, I guess. More foam dowels are gonna go there and on the other side so it fits nice and snug. Those will also be super glued in place. That looks pretty great. Let's see if it fits in our bow. Should be the right thickness. It's no, it's nice and snug, there we go. And it's just gonna go kind of somewhere in there, I think. I'm not gonna glue that in yet. I'm gonna do the plasti dipping and some of the painting first and then I'll glue it in place. But this, this looks really good. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I think that's right. That looks pretty good, I think. Just held in place with friction for now. But those look really fantastic. And I think that's all the parts that need to be built. So now I can take all of the individual pieces, I'm gonna hang them up and hose them all down with some Plasti Dip to get ready for painting. Actually, before I hit everything with Plasti Dip, I'm gonna use my heat gun to heat seal everything. This makes a much more uniform surface on the foam and it'll take the Plasti Dip nicer. We let the Plasti Dip on our bow dry overnight and it's time to do the color. It's a fairly simple paint scheme and it, the base coat's kind of like a gunmetal or like a darker silver color. I don't have any pre-mixed paints like that but I do have this silver and this black. So I'm gonna put a bunch of silver in here and darken it until it's exactly what I want. I'm starting by putting the lighter color in. That's gonna be most of the paint. And then I'm going to add a little bit of black and then mix it and see how I feel and keep doing that until it's the right color. You can see the black has a very dramatic effect on that silver and it looks really, that's actually almost there. I think I want it to be a tiny bit darker, just a little bit. You can see how if you went the other way and tried to use the silver to lighten the black, you might be here for a while. <laughs> it takes so little of that black. That looks fantastic. I'll do a good job of mixing this up and I'm gonna put it in my bottle for my airbrush. I realize I'm painting a dark gunmetal onto a black base coat, so it's not super obvious, but it's gonna look great. The base coat of paint is all dry now, and it's time to do the detail work. The bow doesn't actually have all that much detail painting on it, but the arrow does. There's quite a few colors. I think the shaft is supposed to be like a tan color, and then it's red and silver and silver on the arrow. So I'm gonna start here so I can do a little work and let this dry while I work on the bow. Just mixing up a little tan with some white and, what is this, raw sienna? Yeah, that looks pretty nice. Of course, in hindsight, I'm thinking I probably could have just left this as bare wood, but I didn't do that, so I gotta paint it. Just slow and steady, taking your time. Got this just about done. Uh, of course, this part I'm holding needs to be painted red, but I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit so that I can handle it while I paint the other part. And while this is drying, I can paint the rest of the detail on the bow. These parts here are supposed to be silver, so I'm going to cut out a little mask so I can reuse it, about that big, for painting the, all of these uh, silver. So I can just trace the circle there, the appropriate size, and then cut it out. And this little piece of masking tape I should be able to use over and over again to paint all of them. I could also stack up a bunch of layers of masking tape here and cut a bunch all at once if I wanted to, but I think this one piece will do. I only have, I think, eight of these size circles to paint. And then this can come up here and go over here. And we have a little mask. 
I'm gonna paint these silver, um, but this is a specific silver. This is the iridescent rich silver, and you can see on the back it says that it is opaque compared to the uh, iridescent bright silver, which we will use later, but it's a little bit different. You see it's translucent. So for these who want total coverage, I'm just gonna use the rich stuff. Yeah, that's nice, that covers really well. Because of that mask, I can go right down to the edge and make sure everything gets covered nicely, and then I can peel this up and move down to the next one. And rinse and repeat. Not only does this make for nice clean work, but it also makes for really fast work. Some of these circles are a little bigger, so I just cut a larger mask there. The shaft is still a little tacky, but I can hold it without the paint coming off. So I've got my red here, and I'm gonna paint this part red. There is a silver line down the middle, but I'll do that later when I'm painting the tip. I don't wanna get any red on this part, so I'm gonna mask it off a little bit like that. That's all I need. Now I can mash my paintbrush in there and not worry about getting any on the uh, arrowhead. There are a couple of spots on this bow that are like a orangey metallic-y color, like right around here. Uh, so I'm gonna have to mix that up myself and this is where that iridescent bright silver comes in. So I got my red and yellow, I'll mix an orange and then I'll mix this in to make it look all metallic. So I'm gonna paint this whole part. Yeah, this is gonna take a couple, couple layers, I think, to get good coverage on it, but that's okay. Grab my hair dryer to dry that first layer pretty well so I can apply a second layer right away because I have absolutely no patience. But that second layer is looking a lot nicer. I think these parts here are supposed to be silver. So I can give those a little touch. This tiny little part gets just a little bit of color. I think the last part to do orange are just these little lines here on the grip. The red is dry enough to touch, so I'm gonna take my little masking thing off and then flip it over and sneak it under there. Now I can paint the silver part without getting any of that on the red. There's a silver line that goes around the middle of this and I have an idea. This tape is about five millimeters wide and this is gonna represent that line. So I'm gonna lay it down where I want that line to go uh, and then I'm gonna use my other masking tape and I'll put this next to it and then I'll take that middle part out and that, that's where I will fill in with my silver. So I have one piece on one side and then I'm gonna put a piece on the other side just lining up with that middle bit of tape. You stay put, sir. Now when I remove this middle one, I have a nice gap there. That is exactly where I want it. This is easy mode. You just paint willy-nilly, covering as best you can. Uh, it looks like I'm gonna have to put a couple layers on to get it to really cover that red. That red does not mess around. Now it's time for the fun part, taking off the masking tape. Oh, that's good. I think that just about finishes our arrow. Ah, there we go, that's looking good. I gave everything about half an hour to dry and then I really wanna protect this paint job and make sure it stays nice and clean, so I am gonna clear coat it with some varnish. I've got gloss varnish here. This stuff is awesome. It dries really fast. The varnish is dry. And it's time to start installing all the parts on our bow, starting with the pulleys and our string. Now I imagine in if this were a real bow, it would be meant to pivot on these points here. Mine doesn't pivot. Everything's going to be static as a prop. Uh, but so that we get a little bit of action out of it, I'm gonna use elastic as my bowstring so that we can pose with it. Ha! And we'll see, uh, we'll see the bowstring go back. It should be great. I have my reference over here, so I'm just trying to figure out kind of where this thing's gonna go. Centered between these two, this, this gap area, and then kind of rotate it into place. There is Plasti Dip on here, so I should probably remove a little bit of that. Uh, before I go gluing it down so that I'm gluing it to the plastic and not to the plastic dip. So I'm just making a little mark in here where it's gonna go. Let me flip this over. Do the same thing on the opposite side. So this area here is where I'm gonna glue it and I should be able to scratch through the finish just using an X-Acto. This way the hot glue will grab onto that plastic, which is a lot better than it grabbing onto the plastic dip and potentially peeling off. To get the hot glue to stick to the foam, I can just carve some lines in it. And uh, these are just shallow score marks, and when the hot glue gets all up in there, it's gonna grab onto that. 
On second thought, I think I'm gonna use super glue instead. I wanna keep this where it is and just make a little bit of a gap and put some glue in there and I don't think I can get that hot nozzle down in there. I play bass for hot nozzle. I, play, I was a lead singer for hot nozzle. I'm gonna avoid using my accelerant on there because it does have a tendency to turn the glue white and I, I want it to be uh, as clear as possible. Now I can just sneak over to the other side and get a little glue in there and then I'll flip it over and get the other side of the axle. Quick side note, I, I tried to repair it but uh, some of the Plasti Dip peeled off. Plasti Dip doesn't actually adhere very well to the plastic. It adheres great to the foam but this was all done in styrene. So future reference, maybe something like a PVA glue like Mod Podge to seal it, that would bond to the plastic a little bit better. If this were a real bow, this would be one continuous string, but I'm gonna cut it into a couple of pieces. A short piece here, a short piece there, and then another one that goes kind of around everything. So I'll start with that guy. This is gonna go right around there. I have an awl, so I can poke a hole for it in the middle, like that. And then I have a stick to push the string in there. I'll do a, a practice run before I put any glue on. That'll get pushed into the hole like that and then I'll string it up there. I'm kind of counting on this dragging the glue in as I push it in, kind of like that. And you know what, just to be safe, I'm gonna hit it with some accelerant to make sure that it's fully cured. So I'm gonna stretch this over there and I don't want it pulling out. And then I don't want that fraying, so I've got a lighter, I can burn it. Okay, so that's gonna go in there. Poke. In you go. And a little bit of this stuff. Very good. All right, I just have to do that a couple more times. Time for the big string, and it starts up here. Go in there. Now we string the bow. This goes around there. Like that, that wants to stay on there, that's good. This goes around here. And then it goes around the other one. So that'll be like that. This will be like that. That looks pretty good. And then this connects down here. So this will be all like that and then I'll just glue one more bit right there. Really give ourselves some good room in here. We're good. I've got the string pretty much where it ought to go. I can't really tighten it much more than this um, without it becoming unbalanced. So I'm gonna keep it here. So I'm gonna glue the string where it touches down to the pulleys so that when I pull this, it doesn't slide and just sort of pull these in a little bit. Just a little bit of super glue up on the top should do it. Bit of that, roll it over. Now that won't slide when I pull it, which is exactly what I want. This is the winch for his grapple hook, so I'm gonna add a little string around this guy, and I'll do it exactly the same way. Cool, now I'll just wrap it around, and then glue it on the other side, and we got ourselves a cool looking winch. Perfect. That's all put together, and it's time to attach this and the other little bits of accessories to our bow. I think I have everything figured out where it's gonna go. This guy will go down here first using some hot glue. While I'm getting this thing locked down, I'd like to thank our sponsor again today, Skillshare. You can use our code skl.sh forward slash punish props three to get two month free trial over there. And Skillshare is really wonderful. We like them a lot and it's well worth you checking out and learning how to do some new stuff. These little parts go together to form this little string thingy. I have no idea what it's really supposed to be. Uh, this is just a PVC pipe that I spray painted silver. So that's all good to go. And I can glue that all together. While I'm putting this together, I'd like to thank the members of our Extra Credit Club. You guys are fantastic. Thank you so much for the support. We have a link down below if you want to find out how you can join the fantastic Extra Credit Club. That's friction fit on there. I'm just going to leave that and this will kind of get tacked to the back of it. Uh, but then this can get glued down. Oh, also, by the way, the templates I'm working from here, um, I made them and they are available for free. Again, link down in the description. Also, you'll find a list of all the stuff that we use to make this, all the tools and materials. Those are mostly Amazon links and we get a tiny cut from those. So thanks so much for using our links. To hold these, we're just gonna use a little bit piece of foam. 
and a little super glue. Just tack down one end. In fact, I can put accelerant on this foam here and then when it touches, it will bond immediately. And then this can go under it and I'll glue the other side. And then there's just one more piece to add. This is the last piece to go down. Um, and I'm not weathering any of this. I want it to be super clean. I really like how it turned out. So this is truly the last step. And uh, hey, thanks for watching, by the way. And of course, if you're new, you'll want to hit the subscribe button because we do projects like this every single week. In fact, we got a really good one cooking up next week and you're not going to want to miss it. There we go. Let's just hold this till it cools off and our bow's all done. I have been waiting a couple days to do this and I'm very excited to finally get to do it. But I can draw the bow just like Hawkeye. Ah, take that Thanos! <laughs>